Pam, param, param, pam, pam. Good evening. My friends, I am very happy to see you all here. Today, we will be talking about splitting. We have many partners who have different numbers of splits. They split in various ways and get rewards. So today, we will learn about splitting. Next week, we will start exploring fantastic things related to our blockchain technology. Friends, I see your questions. Thank you very much for the questions. Of course, I will answer some of them, and I will not answer others because they relate more to business than to the technical part. So let's first talk about splits and the splitting process itself, and then, of course, we will answer all your questions that may arise during the current webinar. Why do I think that splits are a very important thing? At our first webinar, we discussed proof-of-work, proof-of-stake, delegated proof-of-stake, various mining methods, but in this case, we need to understand that splitting is a unique phenomenon in the cryptocurrency market and blockchain technology as a whole. Why? Because, talking about Bitcoin, the forefather of all technology, about Ethereum, Tron, Solana, etc., people can mine tokens and coins in these cryptocurrencies, these blockchains. And for certain things, you need to do something. Spend, invest, become the most powerful computer in the network. To mine Bitcoin, you need to maintain a huge amount of equipment. In Ethereum, you need to have a large amount of Ether in order to get rewards, stake it, and get it in the form of rewards. In our splits, however, the essence of the coin is different. Typically, we talk about blockchains, which are the parent coin, and which also mine these coins. In our case, our parent blockchain is Smart, a separate blockchain, Smart blockchain. But on this blockchain, we have the Ultima token. And by the way, the fact that there is a combination of two tokens, Ultima and Split on one blockchain, on the Smart blockchain, allows us to talk about splitting technology now. From where did splits come? Split in English means division. That is, we divide. Why such a term? Because all existing Ultima tokens have already been mined. There will be no more Ultima. It is impossible to interfere with the smart contract, influence the management of the smart contract, or adjust it to print more Ultima, delete Ultima from the contract, or block it at some address. That's it. Ultima has already been mined. Just once and for all. There will be no more. Next, this Ultima was placed in the smart contract pool. That is, this is a new entity, a separate smart contract on the smart blockchain, which is the owner and keeper of this Ultima. Smart contract is an address. In our previous webinars, we've already said that in the smart blockchain, each wallet is an account. Accordingly, a smart contract is also an account. And it turns out that the smart contract, as an account in our blockchain, owns Ultima coins on its balance. Almost 80% of all existing Ultima is stored in smart contracts, and 90% of that is on one large smart contract. And what happens next? This smart contract has certain rules. We are now talking about the very first, the founder of the entire splitting technology, the VIP split. The VIP split is that very contract that will work all our life, the life of our children, and the life of our children's children and more. Because the mathematics is laid down in it in such a way that it proportionally distributes Ultima coins among the keepers of its own VIP split token. Yes, my friends, the VIP split smart contract has VIP split tokens, and it is for their ownership that the smart contract itself rewards all holders of this token. VIP split, my friends, is a smart contract, like all phenomena, as well as Ultima. That is, the Ultima token is, accordingly, a smart contract. The split is also a smart contract. And this smart contract is the issuer. Who is the issuer? The issuer is the manufacturer, the issuer, the printer. That is, it produces our VIP splits. And for the storage of these VIP splits, the smart contract itself rewards users from its resource, from its balance. Currently, we have a reward that amounts to 25.92 Ultima tokens per day. Let's round it off and just say 25. This is the amount that the contract can issue in one day. It is crucial to understand that the 25 Ultima coins distributed among VIP split owners are the maximum daily amount that the smart contract itself can dispense. For what? 
This is because there isn't a specific time like one minute past midnight, 15 minutes past noon, half past six or half past seven in the evening or morning. It's just a certain period during which the smart contract allocates these 25 ultima. This rule of mathematics states that every 10 million blocks, the reward is halved. It simply gets halved. If we now open our blockchain explorer, it would be helpful to see where the blocks themselves are located. Look, friends, here on our Explorer page, we see that our current block is 12,425,620th. This block is, as of today, the highest, the most recent. Of course, after refreshing the page, we see that it has changed to 624th. The halving rules state that the smart contract will halve the daily reward if we're talking about VIP splits at the 20 millionth block. That is, when the 20 millionth block is reached, the red splits will reduce their reward payout from 25 to 12 coins. And thereafter, every 10 million blocks, this coin will be halved. If you've noticed, the halving establishment period in our blockchain is 10 million blocks, which is approximately equal to a period of just under one year. Let's round it up and say that in our case, halving occurs once a year. Meanwhile, if we're discussing our VIP splits, the red splits, and how to work with them and claim rewards, it's crucial to understand that the red split can receive multiple splits into its wallet from different transactions. That is, you might have one today, a second tomorrow, a third the day after tomorrow, a fourth the day after that. Until you demand a reward from each of them, it won't combine them into the same coin. It will keep accruing. Each incoming transaction of red splits is considered separately. Here lies a very important distinction because the red split was unique, the first parent of the entire splitting technology. After it, the technology evolved. Currently, we have splits that are not integers, having a fractional part. The VIP split and the Unity split do not have a fractional part. But the Gold split does have a fractional part. And the Gold split and Unity or VIP split are claimed differently. Claiming a reward in the gold split and in unity in the red one are two different methods. So most beginners try to claim and they are surprised. Why did I expect one number of rewards and receive another? Let's figure it out. So the gold contract has a fractional part. The gold split itself has a fractional part. It can be 100,000th or 5,600,000th, while the VIP split, unity split do not have a fractional part. Only one, two, and so on. In gold split, other reward accrual rules apply. Another rule for calculating the reward is that in order for all your tokens lying in your wallet to participate in the calculation, they need to be merged. Why? Because when we talk about claiming rewards, there may be several incoming transactions in the wallet. What is an incoming transaction? An incoming transaction is when you get splits into your wallet. Now, you may have these transactions incoming within one minute. In just one minute, you can receive 10 transactions to your wallet. One split from one person, two splits from another person, and three splits from someone else. This means you receive 10 splits from various sources to your wallet. However, if we're talking about the gold split, the reward accrual will only start for the first one that ends up in the wallet. Only the coin that was received by you first will be used for receiving the reward during the nearest claim, i.e. during the nearest request. Therefore, it is very important that when you receive the split gold on your wallet, you do it in such a way that the coins you send subsequently, i.e. the second incoming transaction, the third incoming transaction, are as close to the claim as possible. Why? Because only after the claiming takes place will they stick together, and they will be considered as a single whole. This means that instead of one out of ten, for example, there will be ten out of ten, that is, one whole. Therefore, it is very important to understand that people who have Unity Split, Gold Split, and VIP Split can split differently. That is, you can split only one gold, always the first one. Either the first incoming or the one that was at the time of the last claim. That's all. Unity and VIP are claimed based on the last incoming, but at the same time, all are considered. Why is it done this way? Integer values, splits are a valuable thing. It's impossible to lose or send them just like that accidentally. But a gold split can be divided into one ten millionth part, that is, one millionth, and be sent. 
and here the incoming and outgoing transaction can disrupt all our mathematics. To avoid such resets, for calculating incoming transactions, for calculating claiming, only the first incoming transaction is always used. Therefore, a brief guide for all gold contract holders. If you receive incoming tokens to your wallet from outside, try to receive them at the time of the nearest claim. Why? Because then, when you claim the reward, they will merge with those already in that wallet. Questions. Question about the liquidity pool. This pool is filled with Ultima coins. That is, the pool itself is the liquidity pool that distributes this liquidity, Ultima. And what do you get Ultima coins for? For owning a split. Is the speed of new block generation calculated based on market activity? Is the speed of creating new blocks adjusted similarly to BTC? Could the next halving occur before February? Look, the speed of Bitcoin blocks does not depend on anything. Bitcoin needs to find a specific value in order to insert a new block. How does this happen? The network itself perfectly understands its power and needs to set such a number that, on average, will require 10 minutes to form one block. The network regulates itself. That is, its block formation speed is always stable. Always. In our case, it happens exactly like this. The block speed is single, one. In Bitcoin, it's 10 minutes. For us, it's three seconds. What changes? The network difficulty changes. If we are talking about Bitcoin, the more miners there are, the higher the network difficulty. That is, the more intricate, the more unique the number the network picks to designate that very block that will fit into the current chain of blocks. If there are no miners, the network lowers the difficulty to the level of a calculator. Imagine, if you now turn off all the miners in the network, the network itself will recalculate its difficulty. It can do this. It will be possible to mine on old computers and mine bitcoins when the system difficulty is low. That's why our difficulty does not depend on speed, and speed does not depend on difficulty. Moreover, all the rewards that miners get are divided among those who voted for them. But more on that later. Splitting is not mining. Absolutely correct. Splitting is not mining. Excellent. Integer ones are red and green and gold and premium are fractional. Yes, gold and premium are fractional. Accordingly, they have different approaches to getting rewards. 25 Ultima is released into each pool, but how many will be released into all pools in December? This depends, of course, on how many pools we will have. We're saying that we will have new ones starting now. Are VIP and split all different tokens? These are different smart contracts, of course. Gold, Unity, VIP split, premium split, business split. These are all different smart contracts in the smart blockchain network. Absolutely correct. And each of these smart contracts has its own rules that operate according to their own laws. That is, one cannot be shoved into another, the second into the third. And now we have smoothly moved on to our splits, gold and unity. Friends, you now know that unity itself is a pool. Alex has repeatedly said that gold technology has surpassed everything we have. Unfortunately, unity technology has not surpassed others at this moment. The Unity technology does not allow the smart contract itself, that same liquidity pool, to receive liquidity from other pools. On the first webinar, we discussed blockchain, accounts, representatives, and so on. An account is a wallet on the blockchain. Correct? Correct. A smart contract is also a wallet, an address, and an account in the blockchain. Correct? Correct. And now we are talking about pools, about our smart contracts, about the latest evolution of our smart contracts, about the latest evolution of splits. Gold, like any other participant in splitting, can get Ultima, like all users, token holders. That is, the gold pool can get Ultima on absolutely equal terms from the red pool. There are no exceptions, no preferences, no other rules. It is the same participant in the pool distribution as all token holders. Unfortunately, at the time it was created, Unity was not capable of providing so-called eternity. Unity cannot receive from the outside. It's just technically impossible. But the gold pool can. That is, if the gold pool has a red split, Unity split on its balance, gold will receive Ultima from Unity and from the red pool. And since we have the most unique, largest VIP, we put VIP splits in the pool so that the pool is self-sufficient 
thereby providing for itself absolutely without any time limit, because it will always receive Ultima from the outside, always on a par with other participants, and that is why it is eternal. But unfortunately, Unity is not. Currently, for technical reasons, it is impossible to pay for a gold contract through Unity to exchange green for gold, but I am confident that such an opportunity will appear in just a few days, and every Unity owner will be able to purchase gold, and thus they need not worry that the Unity pool is shrinking. Owners of Unity splits simply exchange them for gold and get the opportunity to continue splitting their reward from the gold pool. That is, it is an absolutely continuous process. Unity flows into gold, Unity is exchanged for gold, Gold receives Ultima from the outside and, accordingly, continues to distribute it to other market participants, to other pool participants. What is the difference between staking and splitting? Splitting is a smart contract. It's a process managed within the blockchain by a single smart contract. Staking, on the other hand, is the freezing of a base token to gain something. If we talk about staking in terms of smart, you can freeze smart to obtain energy or bandwidth, that is, a resource that you will spend on either the operation and execution of transactions from smart to smart, that is our bandwidth, or on the operation of smart contracts, as smart contracts consume energy. Staking is obtaining network resources. I understand that for many this will be a shock. How is that? Staking pays me. Yes, the network pays in bandwidth and energy. Everything else is for voting, so do not confuse staking with voting. If they tell you that you can stake and get 50,000%, that's not staking. Staking is when you, according to the rules of the network itself, the blockchain itself, perform a certain action. The action involves freezing coins, choosing what you freeze them for, for energy or for bandwidth. Bandwidth is needed to send smarts, the base coins of the network. Energy is needed for smart contract transactions. A transaction is anything. Checking a smart contract is a transaction. Asking is a transaction. It's not just the method before executing send, but any transaction requires resources, and these resources are provided by staking. Whereas splitting is a pre-programmed model in which resources are distributed by owning another resource. That is, two different entities on the same blockchain. One contract holds Ultima and participates in its division for that. If you have splits, the contract sends Ultima to you under certain conditions. From a blockchain perspective, staking is much more low level, while splitting is at a higher level, plus more mobile and flexible. That is, the conditions of splitting do not affect the operation of the network itself. However, staking can affect the operation of the network itself, as it is possible to arrange re-voting and so on. Where do you use empty green licenses? if filling and changing them is not profitable? That's a good question, but wait a second. You can purchase Unity contracts without any problems and exchange them for gold, so there are no issues with the greens. That is, even if you have an empty license, you can easily convert it, i.e. reach the limit and get green contracts, and these contracts can be exchanged for gold splits. For questions about Smart Defender, I activated the phone on the old device and planned to move to a new phone. How can I import the card so it works on another phone? Smart Defender is a wireless, charge-free and inaccessible storage for your private keys, not just one, but dozens. You can set up a new wallet on the new phone and make it work with Smart Defender. Or you can use your existing wallet that's on the old phone. So imagine this. Let's do it like this. Yes, I have two phones. This is, say, the old phone. On the old phone, you have a smart wallet with Smart Defender. Great. You want to buy a new phone and are worried that your card is linked to this device. So, what can you do? Simply by having the new device in hand, you import your mnemonic from the old wallet into the new device. In other words, you just import the old wallet into the new device. And after the import, either during the import, press the hard wallet button, or after the import, you can make it a hard wallet. So, in your wallet settings, you'll have the option Make a hard wallet. Link Smart Defender. After you make it a hard wallet, you'll re-enter your mnemonic, that is, confirm ownership of the mnemonic, which will be split into two parts. Part will remain in Smart Defender, part will remain in Smart Wallet. 
you can even delete your wallet with Defender from the old phone and create it on the new device. Next, there's a question related to Smart Defender about the lifespan of the card itself. I don't have this information. But I can say that this card doesn't run out of charge, doesn't demagnetize, and doesn't get wet. Of course, you shouldn't burn it, throw it down an elevator shaft, or wash it, though it could break. But by its nature, it is very durable. This means it has no batteries, no magnetic components. People often ask if our Smart Defender demagnetizes. Can it be stored with a phone? Will it demagnetize from being near the phone? Will the contact worsen? Will the signal be lost? No. These are two completely independent technologies. There are no magnets, no magnetic tapes. It doesn't demagnetize over time or from being carried in a pocket or phone. So don't worry. This is a very durable and reliable device, a very reliable gadget, a means, a wallet. It is an excellent protection method that we have for you and your smart wallets, as Smart Defender works only with Smart Wallet, not with any other wallet. When will the green to gold transition open? Are technical work still ongoing? Yes, unfortunately, my friends, technical work is still ongoing. Consequently, the Unity Split payment method is still closed. But please, don't worry, don't fret, it won't take very long. Please monitor our main Telegram channel, it will always publish the official status. What if the phone is lost? So if you lose your phone, you create a new wallet, import your mnemonic phrase into it, and then import this phrase onto the smart defender. If you lost your phone but still have the card with you, you don't need to worry. The wallet on your phone cannot be imported anymore. It's impossible to export anything, send anything, or find out the mnemonic. If you lost your phone with the wallet but your smart defender is in hand, you can say goodbye to that phone and not worry about the smart wallet tokens on it because nothing will ever happen to them. Can you export via Bluetooth? No. To transmit information via Bluetooth, you need radio frequency transmission. In our case, we have a slightly different format of operation and, accordingly, a different technology. You don't need a Bluetooth module on board. Not everyone has one. If you import someone else's wallet into the smart wallet and the old wallet has 12 words, will it automatically become a hard wallet with 12 words when imported into the smart wallet? Let's think, let's read it. If you import someone else's wallet into your smart wallet, on your old phone, I suppose, when imported into smart wallet, will the wallet automatically become a hard wallet with 12 words? You can import a mnemonic that consists of 12 words or 13 words. After you import this mnemonic, the phone may keep it. It understands that it has a mnemonic. And in case of anything, you can take a part and put it in the smart defender. If you import another wallet into your smart wallet, yes, you have a wallet in your smart wallet that knows the 12 mnemonic phrases. Great. Wonderful. If you make it a hard wallet, of course, it will also disappear from here. That is, you won't be able to extract the 12 phrases that were imported earlier. Yes, look, if you have a mnemonic that was successfully imported into the smart wallet, then you can enter this wallet that was imported into the settings. Let's try it now. So here I have a wallet. It's empty. Smart wallet number three. We click on settings, my wallets. Here we see smart wallet number three, and you see the button to make it a hard wallet. You click on make hard wallet, and when you have imported another wallet, another mnemonic into smart wallet, you go into Wallet Settings, click on Make Hard Wallet, and accordingly, you import that mnemonic. And, and that's all. That's all for today, my friends. See you soon. I wish you all the best. Good luck, and I'm back to work. Bye.